I read this policy when I first created this channel almost one year ago. It has not changed since then, and I do not have a problem with it. Let me explain why. It's Mac tonight. Come on, make it Mac tonight. So I want to lead off here with a tweet that pretty much illustrates this huge misconception that people had about the whole thing, and still have. The tweet reads, We hear you loud and clear. Our monetization policy has not changed, but we do have a new notification system. Then they have a link to details. Let's take a look at that. We want to highlight recent changes we made to improve transparency and fairness around video monetization and clarify some confusion in the creator community around our long-standing advertiser-friendly content guidelines. Again, long-standing. We recently started rolling out our improved notifications in Video Manager to make it clearer to creators when a video is demonetized due to advertiser-friendly content concerns as well as to make it easy to appeal. This change is just one part of our broader effort to improve our platform and help our creators build strong businesses on YouTube. Blah, 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 we did not change our policy of demonetizing videos that may not be appropriate for Google's brand advertisers, nor have we changed how these policies are enforced. This is nothing new, you guys, and it's not a big deal either. Out of all the videos I've put up, there is in fact one video that I made that is demonetized for these reasons. Although, conveniently enough, it was not a video that I intended to monetize in the first place because I was in fact talking about something very controversial. And I didn't feel like it was necessarily appropriate to make money off of something so serious. So I have no problem with the monetization being disabled on that particular video. I wasn't going to use it anyway in this case. Now, if you're talking about controversial stuff all the time, you probably need to broaden your content anyway. One thing I don't like about this whole situation is that terrible YouTube channels like Grade A, Under A, and Leafy is here do not seem to be affected by this so far. But hopefully they do get affected by this eventually. Nobody is entitled to monetization. Demonetization is not censorship because it is not removing your videos, it is not banning you, it is simply saying, hey, you broke some of these guidelines, we're gonna have to not let you get ads on this particular video. And I think that these guidelines are actually pretty reasonable. Let's get into that now. So how monetization works is that YouTube has advertisers pay them to show commercials and other ads on, before, during, or after videos. But if those videos could be associated with negative things, then of course they don't want the ads playing on such videos. That's why these advertiser-friendly content guidelines make so much sense. Advertiser-friendly content is content that's appropriate for all audiences. It has little to no inappropriate or mature content in the video stream, thumbnail, or metadata, such as in the video title. If the video does contain inappropriate content, the context is usually newsworthy or comedic, and the creator's intent is to inform or entertain, not to offend or shock. So, let's see what's considered inappropriate for advertising. Sexually suggestive content. Of course, that can be offensive to people. It makes perfect sense not to want to advertise on such videos. Violence. Why would you want your brand to be associated with people beating each other up? Probably wouldn't, unless maybe you're making boxing gloves or something. Inappropriate language, including harassment, profanity, and vulgar language, which is a scourge on YouTube. If they crack down on that, you know what? I think it's well-deserved. I hate videos like the aforementioned leafy bullcrap, where everyone's vocabulary is limited to the F-word. Guidelines make people more creative. If there's boundaries to what you can and you can't say, you're gonna say more creative things. And there's too much swearing on YouTube, let's be realistic. Now, most of my audience probably isn't going to care, but my audience so far has been mostly of the older demographic. Not entirely, but mostly. But you gotta realize, the advertisers 
do not want to be associated with people who are swearing every other word, and parents also don't want their kids seeing these swear-filled videos from all these people. I think it's a positive thing if there are less swear-filled videos because people want to protect their monetization. Though I'm not a parent, I also am not a fan of kids that swear all the time. It's pretty frickin' annoying, actually. I don't necessarily dislike them as people, but I dislike the habit. It's just this really bad habit that so many YouTube creators have fallen into and ought to get out of anyway, so if this encourages them to do so, great. Promotion of drugs and regulated substances, including selling and use and abuse of such items. Of course, you don't want your brand associated with drug use, obviously. Unless maybe you're selling bongs or something, but those aren't going to be advertised on YouTube. Get out of town. Controversial or sensitive subjects and events, including subjects related to war, political conflicts, natural disasters, and tragedies, even if graphic imagery is not shown. This one, I'm a little on the fence about, I will admit, because who's to say what's like controversial or sensitive and what isn't? But I understand the concept behind it. If you're really like saying things that could be very controversial, some advertisers might not be into that. However, I don't know how they make the call on things like that, so, uh, I don't know. That one should probably be amended to be a little more specific, but honestly, none of this is enforced all that harshly because you don't see guys like Leafy losing all their monetization, even though people like him explicitly should be, because if you look down at best practices, it says context is key. We understand that high quality content isn't always sanitized, especially when it comes to real world issues. If your video has graphic material in it, you can help make it advertiser friendly by providing context. Follow YouTube's policy guidelines. This is separate from advertising best practices. Policy guidelines is the stuff you can actually get banned for, but that's a whole other topic. Do use a title and thumbnail for your video that represents the content. That means no clickbaiting. No misleading titles, no thumbnails that are just pictures of boobs, a title and thumbnail that actually represent what the video is about. Leafy breaks this with every single video he releases. Do create content that appeals to brand advertisers looking to engage with your content. This can increase the chances of finding an advertiser sponsor for your channel. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that. Do they mean pander to specific brand interests? Like, uh, make videos about soap so soap companies will want to advertise on your channel? I don't know. Don't use explicit language or imagery in your title or thumbnail. Again, don't put frickin' boobs as your thumbnail. Don't embed promotions for your own sponsors in your video since this can create advertiser conflict. Oh, really? Alright, well that looks like a real complicated can of worms. So, you know, uh, I'm not gonna really talk about that one right now because that is not quick critique material. So that mostly wraps up my thoughts on this matter. Like, guidelines, they're a good thing sometimes. I want to stress again, this is separate from the actual rules of YouTube. I don't support censorship, but this isn't censorship. That's why the video title is what it is. It's not a TOS change like people think it is. All that they did is start telling you when they demonetize your stuff. That is the only change that's happened here. And the final thing I want to say about all this is that I was told by a certain a-hole content creator that at our level, Patreon is the way to go anyway. Now that I finally have a few people who have pledged, I kind of see the merit. I think a lot of content creators are kind of learning a lesson here that, hey, maybe I should just go open up a Patreon so I can be sure that even if I lose monetization on some stuff, it doesn't hurt as bad, you know? At first, I didn't want to have to rely on Patreon, but let's face it, YouTube ad revenue for low view channels is negligible. So, uh, pledge to my Patreon, guys, yeah! Hey, look at these cool people who already did! <laughs> that was a great way to end the video. Peace.